Good morning, everyone. <coughs> it's Jelani. Today's reading comes from Second Kings, chapter twenty-three. Continuation from yesterday. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Yeshua Hamashiach. We give you thanks for yet another day of life that you have given us. And as I like to ask on behalf of all of us, Lord, is that when we give you thanks, we are doing so in spirit and in truth. For we cannot lie to you because you know the heart of all men. Therefore, make us holy and acceptable before you in so much that when we do ask or thank or praise or worship you, it would always be honored by you because it will be done in spirit and in truth. Therefore, we ask that you forgive us for each time that we have done things of our own self or for our own praise or our own gratification or any such thing. Because again, if we try to, or if we do things for vain glory, then it is futile. It is folly for on our behalf. All praise, all worship, everything belongs to you because, again, you are worthy, as the word has said. So forgive us, dear Lord, of our sins, known or unknown, things done or left undone. We pray that you keep us, keep us from falling, as we ask each and every day, and that you continue to lead us by your Holy Spirit. Instruct us, edify us, correct us by your holy word so that we may know and do and fulfill your good, acceptable, perfect and holy will. Lord, in things that we don't know, I pray that you grant us wisdom and also that we trust in you and in your judgment and in all that you have prescribed for our lives to, to happen. Again, if we knew all things, then that means we would not need you. But we as men, if we humble ourselves enough, we know without doubt that we have no real power. We don't know what tomorrow holds for us. Neither do we have power to do whatever we want some of us is deceived in thinking so but really and truly only can do what you authorize so dear lord i just pray for all of us today that the plans of our hearts are in line with your will so that we do not go astray that you align our hearts and our minds with you giving us the mind of Christ, the heart after your own, so again, we can walk in obedience in this life, and doing so will please you if we combine this with faith and perfect it with love. Heavenly Father, the tests and trials that we go through each and every day, let us not fret, let us not be anxious, let us not worry. But that you help us to overcome all things. Not leaning on our own understanding, not doing things that is beneficial in our own eyes and thwarting your will. We do not want to be found in that camp, nor do we want to ever turn away from your leading your, or seeking you so we know that these tests and trials are there 
to help us in these things so that we don't again fail you nevertheless we ask for your help so we don't fail you heavenly father give us a word today from your word we ask as always that you continue to perfect your love in us for you and one another that you continue to use us in the lives of the youth to raise them up in the knowledge truth and understanding of who you are so when they themselves are of age they shall never leave you nor forsake you that you continue to use us in the lives of one another to bear each other up in the times and seasons appointed and that you continue to promote to sustain to nurture and put your hedge of protection around marriages in the pursuit of godly marriages so that in all things we as mankind may glorify you O heavenly father through and by and for and in the holy righteous name of our lord and savior jesus christ yeshua hamashiach we pray amen all right so second kings chapter 23 and the heading here says josiah's religious reforms Verse 1. And the king sent, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him, and the priests and the prophets, and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant which was found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. And all the people stood to the covenant. And the king commanded Hilkiah, the high priest, and the priests of the second order, and the keepers of the door, to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal, and for the grove, and for all the host of heaven. And he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron, and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. And he put down the idolatrous, and he put down the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah, and in the places round about Jerusalem them also that burn incense unto Baal, to the sun and to the moon, and to the planets, and to all the hosts of heaven. And he brought out the grove from the house of the Lord without Jerusalem, unto the brook Kidron, and burned it at the brook Kidron, and stamped it small to powder, and cast the powder thereof upon the graves of the children of the people. And he brake down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord, where the woman wove hangings for the grove. And he brought all the priests out of the cities of Judah and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense from Eba to Beersheba and break down the high places of the gates that were in the entering in of the gate of Joshua, the governor of the city, which were on a man's left hand at the gate of the city. Nevertheless, the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, but they did eat of the unleavened bread among their brethren.
and he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, Hinnom, that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire to Molech. And he took away the horses that the kings of Judah had given to the son at the entering in of the house of the Lord by the chamber of Nathan Melech, the chamberling, which was in the suburbs and burned the chariots of the son with fire. And the altars that were on the top of the upper chamber of Ahaz, which the kings of Judah had made, and the altars which Manasseh had made in the two courts of the house of the Lord, did the king beat down, and break them down from thence, and cast the dust of them into the brook Kidron. And the high places that were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand of the Mount of Corruption, which Solomon the king of Israel had builded for Ashtoreth, the abomination of the Zidonians, and for Shemosh, the abomination of the Moabites, and for Milcom, the abomination of the children of Ammon, did the king defile. And he brake in pieces the images, and cut down the groves, and filled their places with the bones of men. Moreover, the altar that was at Bethel, at, and the high place which Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, had made, both that altar and the high place he brake down, and burned the high place, and stamped it small to powder. And burned the grove. And as Josiah turned himself, he spied the sepulchres that were there in the mount, and sent and took the bones out of the sepulchres, and burned them upon the altar, and polluted it, according to the word of the Lord which the man of God proclaimed, who proclaimed these words. Then he said, what title is that that I see? And the men of the city told him, It is the sepulchre of the man of God, which came from Judah and proclaimed these things that thou hast done against the altar of Bethel. And he said, Let him alone. Let no man move his bones. So they let his bones alone. With the bones of the prophet that came out of Samaria. And all the houses also of the high places that were in the cities of Samaria, which the kings of Israel had made to provoke the Lord to anger, Josiah took away and did to them according to all that the acts that he had done in Bethel. And he slew all the priests of the high places that were there upon the altars, and burned men's bones upon them, and returned to Jerusalem. All right. So there was some. So I'll just pause a little bit. There was quite a, 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 a significant reform that Josiah did here. So we read yesterday of him coming to the knowledge of the error of the way of himself and the people of Israel, people of Judah, people of the kingdom, of the, um, the nation, should I say. He, he realized that they were in grave error. Not only that, it was prophesied that they were, do, they were doing wrong and the Lord was going to punish them. Nevertheless, the Lord was going to spare the people well s s delay it or de um, for Josiah's sake so that Josiah won't see it in his days but after it, he dies it shall come upon them and we saw where there was a lot of things going on here think about it these were the children of God they should have been the children of God God's people and 
look what they were we read some of the things that they were doing they had vessels in the actual place of god which were dedicated to baal where is it verse um where is it okay i can't find it just yet but we read that right that there are some vessels in the in the that were dedicated to baal they had sodomites at the uh, around about like set up camp near near the the, the the um the gates and all of that stuff was it the gates i know what it's there right we just read it but i can't remember it verbatim Yeah, they were by the house, verse 7, by the house of the Lord, right? Women making hangings for the grove. Like, literally, they were doing, it looked like they were doing everything wrong and nothing right. And how can we learn from this? We see where the word of the Lord is important, right? Because, again, what God wanted them to do it was written it was written down hence when they found the um they found the law in the when they were do what we read yesterday when they found it and they read it they, they realized like hold on we're doing a lot of things wrong here that's what josiah noticed right so the word of the lord is important so never ever think to yourself that yeah it's just our like we call it the Bible now. Uh, it's just the Bible. I don't need the Bible. I have a, I have a relationship with the Lord that I don't need the Bible. I don't need the word of the Lord. I don't need to be reminded of the, the written text. I would say that is not a good direction to take. I do agree that we should have a relationship with the Lord. It's not all about just reading. Right? We do. But when I talk about they that love him, those that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth, right? And I always mention that is done by his Holy Spirit in us, in spirit and in truth, by his word, right? The word and the spirit bear record of each, bear record that our eternal father is who he is, right? <laughs> and testify of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So... That's a lesson that we can learn here because they thought, I would have thought, I would have think that they thought that they were serving. Well, I don't know what they thought they were serving, but they, they, the people then must have think that they were serving some God or whatever God, right? <clears throat> but we saw where it was all wrong. It was all in error. And we saw where the kings sometimes tradition is passed down and we're just continuing it thinking that eh, this is what everybody has done from from back in the day so it must be right but i always say question these things even when the lord brought me to start seeking him and again in his word also it came a point when i'm like but yes when i'm growing up in church there's certain things that they did but the scripture speaks directly against that so what am i going to do continue in the tradition because that's what i just accustomed to or am i going to follow the word right i always implore people the word won't lie the word won't turn us away from the truth right it's when we lean on our own understanding going after the traditions of men and not god that's where we fall into error um i always hear people always quoting like when they want to sound ph um, philo philosophical, is that the word? They always talk about the the early church fathers, right? And they're talking up when they're saying that they're always talking about some man that may have had some dealings with what we know as the church back in the day. But even so, not to bash any, I don't know them, right? I I don't know every one of them, but I'm I always say. We don't we don't seek man right i was watching something yesterday and this guy 
who proclaims that Mary is his intercessor because he was emotional when he went into a Catholic church and all of that stuff. He was quoting a lot of all the early church fathers done this early church. And when I, when I was listening to him, I'm like, but the script, the actual word of God goes against that. Like the worshiping of anything but God, that no man but Christ is our intercessor right that we shouldn't bow down to any to any images which they bow down to the statue of mary etc so the scripture tells like from the scripture we know what we should and should not do but again he using teachings from the so-called early church father and plus there's no father no no early church father nothing right christ is christ jesus his church right <laughs> it's his church right there's no early um church fathers and that's why i always leave off terminologies like that because again it just leads us into er into error even peter and paul i never see no instances of them trying to puff themselves up calling themselves the early church fathers or any such thing right and we know that they were the apostles of christ and they were the ones that the, the apostles um, were the ones that Christ himself used to give us documented words and events of his gospel, his life here on earth, his resurrection, and also after that, and the prophecies of times to come. And again, I can't see where they themselves are puffing up themselves and saying that they are the early church, but they don't say it. Yes, you might have a um, one or two line where like, Paul would say, I've begot you in the faith. But all he was telling, all he was trying to convey there is that, look, th thanks be to God that he used me to win you over to him. That's all he's saying, right? But again, the tradition of men sometimes, and not sometimes, would always strip us up, right? Because if that is not aligned with the word of God, with the spirit of truth, then we're going to fall in error. And we see it here. We see it here again as an example back in this day and it's presently right right now there's a lot of things that individuals might do thinking that they're serving god and i'm saying that not to discredit myself i'm talking like from first hand there's things that i thought that was right that i did to the lord well i thought i was serving the lord and it was wrong it was it was wrong when i read the scripture from us and, and ask the Lord to give me the understanding. It's like, okay, Lord, I need to stop doing that because that ain't that ain't you. That's me. That's me doing that. You didn't ask me to do that, right? So we saw Josiah. He turned holy, holy around, right? In so much that he just stopped everything in its track. All of you Sodomites have to go. All of you ones that um, have high places and worshiping Baal and Molech have to go. Those who of you are making the grove have to go, right? All of these things that you have set up, the vessels where you have to take them out and break them into powder and, and throw them in the book of Kidron and all of those things like what we just read, right? We see where he wholly sought after following the Lord in spirit and in truth and notice that he went and read he never just started doing everything. He read the word to the people, right? He gathered all the people and read the word. Well, he gathered unto him the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him and the priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant, which is found in the house, of, which was found in the house of the Lord. Reading the word is profitable to us. It brings to remembrance those things that we should do, those things that we should not do, right? It testifies again of what and who our God is and what he expects of us. And when we read these things in the mornings, or whenever, afternoon, evening, whenever you read, it is beneficial to us. But again, we don't want to just read it for mere reading sake or 
we, we truly want to understand and relate to it and again that's where the holy spirit would bring to remembrance and make those things known unto us right so and even look he even spoke about that some some kings that did some error right we have king ahaz the altars that ahaz set up the altars that manasseh set up he, he broke them down beat them down and all of that stuff because again although those were the preceding kings they were in error and he noticed he never just said all right he was a great king and just leave it he even made mention of king solomon we all reverence king solomon because king solomon wrote a lot of um good stuff in the scriptures we have the book of proverbs we have the book of ecclesiastes um we have ecclesiasticus which is um found in some bibles also we have the songs of solomon so we have all of these things from the king solomon which was again what the scripture says was the the wisest king because again the lord gave him supernatural wisdom we know that christ surpasses him but nevertheless as a king he was great but even he was in error so we can't just follow everything just because oh a king solomon they will just follow everything what he did no we take the good that he did yeah and understand that the lord was with him but when it's, there's error then we have to say well that was error we're not condemning solomon i'm not here condemning solomon in any way but again there was error that he did and if if king josiah here was just gonna say yo it was king solomon you know god was god gave him wisdom and all of these things but just can't allow what he did all of what he did because you know no we have someone greater than king solomon right and hence why we line up everything with the word of god ultimately now we have christ jesus so everything we can line up with the so we can use i know there's a saying in Jamaica that um, when a man want to have multiple wives, and just say, yeah, man, we have to have multiple wives like King Solomon. And then I always say, but did you not see what happened when he had his 700 wives and 300 concubines that, what led, that led him to that? That was the reason. I think the scriptures verbatim says when he was old, his heart was taken away from serving the Lord because he, he loved the, his many wives. Right, and he, he starts setting up all of these groves and altars for pagan gods on behalf of his wives. And this is what some of what um, King Josiah here overthrew. Because again, it was wrong. It was wrong. We can't, we can't beat around the bushes. He said it here in verse 13. And the high places that were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand of the Mount of Corruption, which Solomon, the king of Israel, had builded for Ashtoreth, the abomination of the Zidonians, and for Shemoth, the abomination of the Moabites, and for Milcom, the abomination of the children of Ammon, did the king defile. So, again, I'm not here to judge Solomon. I'm not telling you Solomon, where Solomon is post his death. None of that. I'm just saying that there was error here that the king Josiah noticed even from the king there and he he made amends he he, he broke them down he made amends so again we can learn from that and say all right even though many grew up learning all of this stuff and this is what yes my grandparents my parents all of that stuff um taught down the line i have to make sure that it's marrying up that it's it's in line with the word of God and where it's not in line you don't have to be disrespectful or anything but you have to just make know that no you're going to serve the Lord your God right because even growing up my one example of mine growing up there the church that I went to they had a big image an image of so-called Jesus at the midst of the church and i remember even as a child i used to question it like why is that there who is that i don't believe that that's jesus as a child nobody told me this but anyway as i, I don't know when i revisit the church and it's not to bash anybody but again it, it was put in my heart that no i can't go up there and kneel before this image 
although they do say you're not kneeling to the image you're kneeling to the lord but the image is just happy to be there i'm like but if, if you're physically looking at yourself you you're, you're bowing down before this image whether your mind is there or whatever I'm, you're physically you're, you're physically bowing down before this image and I, I just decided that i'm not doing it right because again what i've read the lord does not eat and sometimes we always say no the lord know our heart yeah he knows our heart <laughs> that's it, something we need to be fearful about and again if his word says something is either we're going to decide to obey it or not obey it right but again we do pray that he helps us to be bold and courageous right in the face of everything if his word says something that we continue in it even if we are ridiculed even if we are ostracized or any such thing that we stand in his truth right so i love i love the story of king josiah the account of king josiah here because he had zeal and he went and he did what was right in the eyes of the lord and this must have pleased god well right um but again in our lesson is observing our way seeing if we're doing things of our own understanding or our own self or doing things just by the tradition of man looking and observing what we actually do and seeing if it lines up with what god wants and ultimately we have no excuse because christ jesus himself came and taught us everything and done everything that we need to do like here in the flesh so that we can always know what is right and wrong right we always have to say what would christ jesus do and go search it out right all the answers there i always say there's not one thing that i've come to in this life that i was had to face that the word of god wasn't able to help me to have some understanding to get through right and again the spirit the word bear witness of our eternal father through christ jesus so continuing verse 21 and the king commanded all the people saying keep the passover unto the lord your god as it is written in the book of this covenant surely there was not holding such a passover from the days of the judges that judged israel nor in all the days of the kings of israel nor the kings of judah but in the 18th year of king josiah wherein this passover was holden to the lord in jerusalem moreover the workers with familiar spirits and the wizards and the images and the idols and the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem did Josiah put away, that he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. And like unto him was there no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might according to all the law of Moses, neither after him arose there any like him. Notwithstanding, the Lord turned not from the fierceness of his great wrath, wherewith his anger was kindled against Judah, because of all the provocations that Manasseh had provoked him withal. And the Lord said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight as i have removed israel and will cast off the city jerusalem this city jerusalem which i have chosen and the house of which i said my name shall be there now the rest of the acts of josiah and all that he did are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of judah in his days pharaoh necho Nekho, king of Egypt, went up against the king of Assyria to the river Euphrates. And King Josiah went against him, and he slew him at Megid Meg Megiddo when he had seen him. And his servants carried him 
in a chariot dead from Megiddo and brought him to Jerusalem and buried him in his own sepulchre. And the people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and anointed him and made him king in his father's stead. And again, some things that we read now, I said, because we know what Josiah did there, but he ended up getting killed by the king of Egypt, right? Well, getting king killed in the war when he was, they were fighting against the king of Egypt. And it just, it just is what it is. One of the examples that I always use is Elisha, right? The one who came after Elijah, his protege that the Lord also used. He got sick and died. The scriptures say he got sick and died. And you're like, okay, all right. If, if that's how the Lord wanted him to. Because sometimes we think that when we, like we are for the Lord and the Lord, like we're going to have some, like, big, like, what do you call the word? Like, outstanding, like, coming out of the world, like, chariot of, chariot of fire and all of that stuff. But sometimes we, people just die, even if they serve the Lord. Right, but again, we know that's not anything to frown about because again, what we do look for is the life after death, the eternal life. So I like how, again, it pointed out that he, he, he um, took out the people who were workers of familiar spirits, the wizards, the images, the idols. The, like they were in deep, deep, like like evil works right the people but again josiah did reform it he was a young king we know that he started his reign when he was eight i believe as it said yesterday and this is when he was 18 when he was doing all of this reform right um the scripture made known that there was no king like him that um, turned his heart to follow the Lord. That turned to the Lord with all his heart and all his soul and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses. So again, we can learn from this. And we want, we want to turn to serve the Lord and to love the Lord with all our heart, mind, soul, strength. Right? And we don't have to be in a, 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 a perpetual trap of error by following the tradition of men or any such thing, right? We can be this, the break, like break that chain. And we just pray that that's what we do. And this is why I always want and pray that we are all of well, I try to always pray that we be all of one mind in Christ because, again, anytime there is differences or clashes or confusion or any such thing, that is where man has interjected something. And hence, even when I was talking a couple of days ago, this is why I try my best to not just use terminologies of man or the, the understanding of man. I just try to go back to the, the word i don't try to lean on my own understanding give my own opinion or anything i'll give um examples in my life maybe but not leaning on my own understanding not trying to make my way the right way no if i'm wrong and the scripture makes sure that i'm wrong i'm glad to say i'm wrong follow the word right so we'll just read up the last few ver um, verses of the chapter so verse 31, the heading here says, Josiah rules in Judah. Jehoahaz was 20 and 3 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 3 months in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord according to all that his fathers had done. And Pharaoh Necho put him in bands at Riblah in the land of Hamath, that he might not reign in Jerusalem. 
and put the land to attribute of an hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. And Pharaoh Necho made Eliakim the son of Jezo Eliakim the son of Josiah king in the room of Jezo Josiah his father, and turned his name to Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim, and took Jehoaz away and he came to Egypt and died there so again just pause a little bit see Josiah did all of that uh, mighty feat for the Lord turning back his heart and the heart of the people or the, the knowledge and the wisdom of the people back to the understanding of what the Lord wanted them to do and see one generation just his son after him he says he did which that was was evil in the eyes of the Lord. So again, you can do all what is right, and yet you might have a child that do all that is wrong. But again, that doesn't stop you from doing what is right. All we can do is pray that you know the next generations, and that's why I pray each and every day that the youth have an example of Christ, so we can actually steer them to follow Him. So when they are themselves are of age, they shall never leave him nor forsake him. So verse 35 says, Jehoiakim rules in Judah. And Jehoiakim gave the silver and the gold to Pharaoh, but he taxed the land to give the money according to the commandment of Pharaoh. He exacted the silver and the, the gold of the people of the land and everyone according to his taxation to give it unto Pharaoh and Necho. Jehoiakim was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Zebuda, the daughter of Pediah, Pediah, Pediah of Ruma, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord according to all that his fathers had done. When I read this, it really breaks my heart because, again, I'm looking at we as mankind, not just them and putting them aside. I'm looking we as mankind throughout the ages, how we have grieved our God, our Father, in doing that which was wrong and is wrong. And yet still, we are still here under his, under his, under his mercies. It really uh, upsets me that we... We still do that which is wrong in the eyes of the Lord, or we presently do that which is evil in the eyes of the Lord. What I would always do is just pray that the Lord bear with us in love, correct us, give us the understanding of what we ought to do and what not to do, and keep us on that path of righteousness through and by and for and in the holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. So I'll leave it at that today. Anything that you want to share, anything that you think I got wrong, drop it in the comment section or send it into the word at eachreach1.org. And as much as the Lord has led me, taught me and kept me over the years, I'll answer them according to his word, according to his principles, according to his will, being led by his Holy Spirit. Have a blessed day, everyone, and God's willing, we'll catch up again tomorrow.